Grab a seat, please. There are lots of seats around here or there. It's my pleasure to introduce our current and new DPL, Neil McGovern, for his annual Bits from the DPL. Thanks very much. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so I'm aware that this talk is due to cut into lunch, so I'll, I'll try and keep it slightly uh, into dinner, so I'll keep it slightly more, uh, more refined so, it's, uh, so people can get their food early. Um, hopefully everyone's okay with that anyway. I'm um, also kind of glad that it's in this, this slot when it was originally proposed and I got my initial time slot. It was going to be a, a 9 a.m. slot just after the cheese and wine party. So I <laughs> probably wouldn't expect quite quite so many people as, as we have here today. Um, so, yeah, welcome everyone. Um, this final day of uh, the open weekend. So anyone who isn't a, a, a regular person, hi, and um, welcome to Debian. And welcome to the, the huge Debian family, which is certainly growing all the time and, and, and something that's, that's really good to see. Um, it's quite fantastic that there's just so many people involved, especially this year. Um, so when I last checked the stats, I think we had uh, 383 people who had um, so far checked in. Um, slightly less than um, for DevComp 7, but I'm certain, <laughs> I'm certain over the next few days that, that'll grow up and, and definitely surpass us. Um, and I just want to sort of remind everyone what the size of the project we are. It's such a huge effort, one of the biggest open source and free software projects in the world, combining around 1,000 developers, a few thousand uh, maintainers and contributors as well, and also all our users. It is a really huge effort that we've managed to still be here after 22 years and still be going strong. Uh, hopefully, a DevConf in future will look a little bit like that. I, I think the Orga team might be slightly more stressed if we end up with numbers, but what a fantastic thing. And also, over the last few years, we've had 42 new project members have joined us. So, so this is over the last year we've had all these people. Um, huge welcome to everyone there. And... It's especially one or two on there, which um, I, I decided to get back into doing application management, it's especially for our non-uploading um, developers as well, which has been a, <laughs> which has been, which has been a huge boost to, to really sort of grow where we're going. Um, and also, welcome back. I've noticed a few people this year who I haven't seen in a few years, so stand up if you've, if you've been away for a few years and you're returning. I know there's certainly some people. Excellent. Tolimar. <laughs> there he is. And Chris Rose as well, is he here? Oh, excellent. Been, been, was active before I even joined Debian and then essentially has come back again. So it's, it's great to see everyone back. And, and thanks very much for remembering us and coming back again. Um, there, there's been a few new people as well, very, very new people who I haven't kind of seen around before in, in previous dev comps. And where did all these children come from? I think there must have been maybe... <laughs> the, well, I, th I think, I, I think in the Switzerland dev comp there might have been something in the water, because there's suddenly been a huge effort, but it's absolutely fantastic, and it's really fantastic to see not only um, our usual developers around, but their families as well, and new people being introduced to, to Debian and, and to technology. Um, the Tech Kids workshops, uh, I think, are an absolutely fantastic initiative that, that really sort of helps broaden Debian and, 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 what, we, and what we do. So, um, when I first came DPL, I, I, I always knew Debian was a big thing in free software, and in the communities and, and things we do, but I went along to my running club and we went for a run, went to the pub afterwards as you do in the UK, uh, you can't have sport without excessive alcohol consumption afterwards so it seems, and about seven or eight people all came up to me and said, hey congratulations on being DPL, I'm going to buy you a pint, and which... <laughs> 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 
happen. Which is great. So if anyone wants to run for DPL, you get free beer. This is a good thing. Um, but it did really impress on me that Debian's a big deal. I mean, it's a really huge deal. If we had a look at some of the latest um, server stats for like web servers, Debian's number one. It's about 32% of Linux um, distributions. And if you combine Ubuntu as well, and all our derivatives, we're above 62% of all Linux servers out there. So we, we really, basically, Debian really does run the world. There's not only that, but the amount of embedded devices that Debian's involved with from, um, as mentioned before, the, the HP um, talk from, from running huge teleco systems to um, assistive devices. Um, I know Andy's around somewhere, um, new, and that product is essentially being based on Debian, and it's a, uh, essentially, it's essentially a uh, speak and spell type device. So it's for people who can't talk. You have a little keyboard, you type in what you want to say, it has predictive um, technology in there, and then it gives people a voice. So Debian is literally being give, used to give people voices who can't speak. And this is the sort of impact that, that Debian can have and that free software can have on the world. Um, so a few things happened, certainly over the last year. Um, apparently we released. So, so I was only DPL for about a week, but I'm going to take credit for this, like any good, <laughs> any good politician anyway. So. In post for weeks, and I already had a stable release. Um, this, this was hugely welcomed. I, I don't know if anyone followed the DevOps Tumblr page or something, but they were following along, and huge cheers from everyone when Debian releases it. It is a big deal. Um, strangely, I also saw a press release that said um, they're having a party to celebrate the release of Debian 8 at Linux Fest Northwest, um, but this work press release was from Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it might be a spoof at first, but I diligently checked the certificates and the domains and made sure they went back. Um, I think people are, certainly large organizations are, are realizing now that this open source free software thing isn't going away. This isn't something that they can just ignore or they can fight against. It's something that they have to embrace. And certainly for someone like Microsoft to throw away a load of cake and do a press release because Debian's released is something I, I never thought I'd see when, when I first joined, <laughs> joined the Debian project. And we've had some new, few new good things, which has started recently as well. So uh, fantastic areas. If, Anyone knows what this might be for a current uh, initiative that's going on? Try and do reproducible builds. They all sort of look the same, so near enough. <laughs> it's the nearest I could find on Flickr to something being reproducible. These are all CC, by the way. Fantastic thing. So, so this is perhaps a, a bit of a better slide to, to explain just how impressive it is where, we, where we've got. So, I don't know if everyone here is aware of reproducible builds and what this is trying to do and the importance of it. When you get a source package and you produce a binary from that, there hasn't traditionally been a way of knowing that what you produced here comes from this source package and it hasn't been tampered with. This is incredibly important if you are for, for the trust that people have in Debian and how we produce things. And so if we're able to say, look, this thing here has definitely come from here. Look, we've rebuilt it again. You can check for yourself, it comes from here. Then people can trust Debian as this platform for where, for where we, we, we run everyone's computers. And I'm just quite impressed with the remarkable progress we've seen here from zero to a huge share of, of things being reproducible. And that work, I'm sure, will continue, um, especially um, thanks to the Linux Foundation's um, grants as well, and supporting this progress. Um, I did a um, Ask Me Anything uh, recently, and it was one of the things that came up as being a hugely popular thing that, that Debian is doing and that, and that we're driving forward, not just for Debian itself, but 
for all distributions and, and making sure we're able to do that. Interestingly, I was also asked um, what I'm most jealous of of other distributions, and I think I said the Arch Wiki, because it is pretty good. <laughs> um, yeah, often when I'm on hash Debian and answering questions, then it comes up with the best answers of the time. But hey, I'm rubbish at writing documentation, so... <laughs> um, another effort we've come up is DDEBs, ability to automatically have debug symbols, um, something which few other distributions have, have had for a while, and it's really, really good to see that, that this sort of um, effort is happening as well if Nils is around. Well done. <laughs> Not the only one, but... So, what's next? What's the next things that, that Debian can do? Where can we go from here? And, and, and what sort of ideas can, can we have? Um, there's a whole range of things we can do. But I'm just going to pick up two or three um, that I want to kind of concentrate on and, and see where we're going. Um, first, PPAs. It's near enough a package. That'll do me. Um, so I've got a BOF scheduled on Friday to try and look what we're doing with, with this and, and trying to finish it off. It was in my platform, was something I, I, I want to push and it's something I believe that um, will really help the development of Debian. Now, it's slightly different from Ubuntu PPAs, as they're well known. It's not going to be somewhere that you can just dump random software and people install various quality packages. This is going to be a very useful tool to aid Debian development itself. So, as far as I remember, most of the work is actually done now. Huge thanks to the, the FTP masters and and DSA, et cetera, for this. So, so the actual code is there in the DAC. The only missing bits are the control functions, so how you create new PPAs, and the want to build system, and how we sort of basically build stuff and, and touch releases. So it is going to hopefully come any minute now, and, and something that we're, we hopefully will be able to use and will ease the sometimes the pain of when we freeze, um, sometimes the ability to easily create backports or even to ease library transitions. If you can create a PPA where you stage your library, check everything works, and you can fix all your breakages, then it, that should help um, unstable and testing as well. One on outreach, I guess, is near enough. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Um, I, I've always mentioned that. Debian is in a huge position to touch many people's lives. And it was slightly worrying that um, the, compared with the amount of Jesse release parties we had all over the world, I video called one uh, into one in India, for example, and it was globally popular. But all of our sprints have been in Europe. So we haven't had some in North America. We haven't had um, any in South America. And there's huge areas here we can really try and push and bring free software and really help um, push Debian to, to be the go-to place in, these, in various countries rather than keeping it a Europe or sometimes even North American um, market. Um, and Debian's in a great place because we are a community distribution. We, we try and aim to be the universal operating system, someone that anyone can come along, join, help out in whatever uh, way they, they want to, be it packaging or doing wonderful press work, for example. Not mentioning that press work at all. She's not even looking at me. <laughs> she's, going to she's going to volunteer to do more press work in future again. It's just... Um, so, so it's an area that people can get involved in really easily and because we're distributed, because we work online it is natural that people can come and join us and we should encourage that and we should try and reach out and try and reach more people third area um, final one here is around accessibility um, it's kind of a sad fact that Free software is about 10 years behind proprietary and commercial offerings. 
There's a reason that iPhones are hugely popular with people who need um, accessibility options. They are just fantastic compared with what you can get normally. I don't believe that it's right that people should have to use proprietary software, which they pay for, to access computing and to access the web and to be able to explore um, what, what we all have. We should be able to put in effort. So there's certainly an area which we can really make a difference to people and try and drive forward to bring computing to everyone rather than just those who are fortunate enough to be able to see a screen well or be rich enough to be able to pay for a license or buy a um, computer or a system for, from, from a proprietary company. There is no reason why we shouldn't be able to do this. We are able to um, speak and work directly with people who require accessibility features and let those people help design it in a way that is much easier than any proprietary company. So it's an area that, that I think we can try and sort of um, help push quite a bit. Um, and so sort of finally, just um, a bit of a huge thank you from me, really. Um, it was ooh, about two... Um, so I've been involved with Debian since about 2001 or so, and doing loads of different roles. So uh, originally doing the web apps policy, which never really got beyond draft because web apps are terrible, terrible things that don't really work with distributions that well. Um, but then uh, with uh, Joey Hess doing testing security team and setting that, eventually that led into many, many years of release management. Oh, not so bad for you. <laughs> and then many years of being release manager as well. Um, and then after that, I, I was... And then I, Tolimar found me at um, DevConf in Banja Luka and found out I could write a press release and then wrote me into doing bits there. But after that, I was sort of feeling a bit, I don't know, sort of burnt out. I didn't really know what else to do with the project. And I, I think this sort of happens to everyone. And it's a huge reminder each time um, of when I come to DebConf and I meet people and how fortunate I am and we all are to, to be involved with such a fantastic project, something that really is changing people's lives, something that is breaking the um, traditional uh, proprietary market and, and enabling people have to have greater access to computing. And it's sort of really fortunate that, that I'm in a position to, to help lead this project and, and, and to do everything for you. Um, finally, um, as I think I mentioned, um, I think Phil Hans, if... He's probably not around, is he around? Probably a small child trying to throw up on him for anyone who saw the morning announcements today. Um, he, he, he did kind of joke that the next DPL hustings, then he can just write a autoresponder bot to, to any questions, which is, that sounds interesting. I look forward to seeing the results. <laughs> so, so, so I, general, I, I think it's something that we should be able to try things. So if anyone has any ideas, stuff they want to do, Debian has the money. Let's go and try some stuff. If we want a sprint to, um, to, to work on accessibility in, in say, um, in Hong Kong, because, it, because there's a huge issue there, or to improve our localization, then let's do that. We have the money to do it. We have, hopefully, and certainly the interest around. So let's go and try things. Um, as I promised, I thought I'd keep it nice and short. Um, so, as everyone seemed to be getting hungry. Um, so I guess, uh, so I'm going to leave a bit about a Q&A if anyone had any questions or wanted to put me on the spot about anything or some random thoughts anyone had, then I'd certainly be very happy to, to answer any of those. Or Someone has to be first. Otherwise, my timing's really, really out. Oh, good. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Lucky me. <laughs> Hello. What's your name and where are you from? <laughs> yeah, you go on. What is your single highest, pre highest, yeah, preference? What is your highest priority thing that you think we should all be working on? Getting the next stable release out, <laughs> to be honest. Um, th th this is what we do as a distribution. We release things. We make software. We give it to our users. Debian is famed for its stability. We backport our security fixes. People can rely on Debian. They can trust us to produce a rock-solid um, distribution, something that people can, in some cases, yes, de derive works from. If they don't like what we're doing, they can tweak it. Um, there was the huge thing that came up when Dev1 came up, saying, oh, we're going to fork Debian, and it's going to be terrible. It's like, fine. There's over 120 forks of Debian out there already. That's fine. Please come and do this. We're happy with that. Being able to produce this reliable, stable operating system that we only release when we're ready, which happens to apparently be about every two years now, um, is something that everyone relies on us to be able to do, and they can trust us to produce that for them. So essentially, putting out releases is one of the main reasons we're here, to get that software into the hands of users. There's loads of other stuff, of course, which we can do to try and improve and push forward free software in general, but we are essentially a distribution. Our aim is to collect software and then distribute it, and one of the best ways to do that is releases. Good answer. Good, good. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about Debian? <laughs> I, I, for, for those that didn't hear that, um, I, I'm not allowed to say releases. Um, I'm, I'm apparently not to say the kilt as well, because it's... <laughs> And, and free beer, yeah. Um, it has to be the people that I'm involved with. I mean, if it, the, the project has enabled me to meet so many awesome people and basically have the career I've had so far as well. If it hasn't, there, there has always been a thing about being involved visibly with an open source project that not only, that, that, that helps you professionally as well. So I got my first job because I was involved with free software. I then got my next job because I was a Debian developer and could put together Linux systems easily and knew how to munge these various crazy different projects which are written in 100 different libraries using um, different um, compatibilities together to make something whole. And then my current job um, I got because essentially I was involved in doing management-y type functions in Debian. And it's, it's as I say to people when they ask, how can you, where's the money in free, in free software? How, how can I create a career with it? It's basically, it's fairly easy. Get stuck in. Go and do something. Find something interesting that interests you and, and that you're able to be the world expert at. And you, you can do that. And on an entirely personal um, um, view, I... Some of my closest friends are with Debian, people I've, I've worked with for many, many years. And I certainly wouldn't have moved to my current city or know half the people I do if it wasn't for that. It is The Debian family is a large one that occasionally gets together at DebConf and Christmas and sometimes has huge blow-up arguments, um, <laughs> possibly over the turkey or the init system, something like that. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but we do all come together. So, I mean, we had huge contentious decisions, but we're still here. So we've had huge arguments with everyone trying to um, stab each other at the end of the day, but we're still here. We're still the Debian project. 
and sort of like that. It's something we love to be associated with, and it's everyone around that, that really makes that. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Uh oh. I'll just stop it. Right. Backups are really, really important. <laughs> so we, we should definitely concentrate on backups. <laughs> so, what's the biggest risk to Debian you see in the five to ten year span? Um, I think something we need to be cautious of, not necessarily a risk, and something that I think will harm Debian is um, a, essentially a return to, to the past. So you have now the containers, dockerization, etc. Are we teaching people that it's okay to go to a random web page and download your app from there and then install it? Are you going to get any security updates for that? Is that going to be integrated? How are you going to work with that? Along with that comes a, a risk that we return to non-free web services. So in the olden days, you had the guru who was in charge of the mainframe, and only certain users, if they were very lucky, could access it through their special terminals that they were allowed to do. <laughs> Or now you have the gurus of the web service, and you can only access it through your mobile phone restricted, that you can only talk to it how they want to. The use of free software and making sure we're able to control what we do with our computing is something that has been the fundamental driving force behind what we all do and, and the very tenets of free software. And I think there's that risk, as especially now as free software is becoming more mainstream, that people realize, oh, there's some s stuff over here. Great, we can use that. But perhaps not being as educated as people involved before about the fundamentals on your rights and how you can use it. Um, there's a huge opportunity as well um, for for Debian to help shepherd that, that, that change and to make sure we are able to, to restrict it. But I do think that there is a risk there that unless we're, vil uh, unless we're vigilant and we make sure that we keep those hard-earned rights, then, then we're going to return to, a, to a, an era which we are essentially just, um, just the consumer. We, we don't have any control. Thank you. I have another question from this side. Um, so, so far Debian also, although we are all free and open and we are pushing frontiers, but so far we are playing largely by um, industry rules, right? Let's say we have our trademark policy. Mm -hmm. So nobody could use Debian word in their products, which to protect how our presentation out there, right? That's what current policy states. Today I've heard about already so many derivatives, H-Linux. I saw all those FSF acknowledged distributions, which are also, many of them are based on Debian. I think it would have only benefit us if any of those were Debian HP or some other name which has Debian in it. Visibility, that means a lot, right? So actually if we were more open and more kind of accessible to those derivatives, right, in terms, in, just in terms of using our name, we would have been in a better place because more people would have known about Debian. That's why I wonder where else could we push our openness frontiers to get away from what kind of industry culture fostered in us? It's, and maybe it would be for our benefit. What do you think about it? So, so in terms of the trade, well, in terms of the trademark, it, it was always kind of interesting to me that um, Originally, we had a logo that was non-free, and we had a 
special use logo only for developers that no one knew what it was. And if you put it somewhere, no one will know what this little bottle is because everyone uses the, the open one. In terms of our trademark, people can use it. You just need to ask. And we give license grants around. Um, there is a boff tomorrow at 11, and then another one at 3 as well, around trademarks and, and how we deal with it. Um, I'm, I'd be keen to have, for example, um, Debian from HP as a brand. There, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. It's obviously it's not Debian. It's not official Debian, but it's obvious that it, it, it's, based, it's based on us and where it's come from. Um, the use of the word Debian is, is, is descriptive, and it should be quite clear. I'm, I'm fairly happy for people who want to do that, just email the trademark team, and, and we can set that up. Um, but I certainly recommend anyone who's kind of interested in where that trade-off lies is to come along at 11 tomorrow. I think the title of the talk is something around what we can call official Debian or Debian or Debian-derived or based on Debian as well. Um, but, yeah, I... I I mean, it makes sense, right? So we have, instead of, um, so for example, instead of H Linux, if we had a, a different policy, it could have been Debian from HP or Debian for Debian for HP for um, the machine edition, or, or or something like that. We we can do something like that, and that emphasises, I think, how much Debian is used everywhere. And, and the basis of it basically being Debian everywhere, but with some tweaks, and that's fine. Exactly my point. It's just now it's not happening because explicitly policy states that it shouldn't be unless you contact us. It's all those, you know, what is allowed by default or even if we stated that, okay, just, you know, use our name, right? Well, but okay, tomorrow 11. Yeah, Got it. tomorrow Thanks. 11. Well, it's, it's just easy. We could disagree with it, say, Mark Law, I personally do, but um, we can I say we, we, we think the law is shit and we just don't follow it and don't have a trademark. One point, I disagree with doing that or say, well, yes, we need to follow the rules because we can't make the global laws. We could make a good OS and I think we do that. It, the, so, so it's kind of interesting here. If, if we have a look at some of these overreaches in trademark or overreaches in copyright or patents that, that we've had, um, that's hugely damaging. But as we've seen recently on SourceForge with things being distributed with extra add-ons or things without permission, then, then we can have problems there um, by not using that. I mean, I'm fairly confident that there is at least some people in Debian who think that um, copyright should just be abolished and, uh, and everything should be free. But then you don't get copy left. So, so, so where do we draw the line? We, as free software advocates, we rely on strong copyright law to be able to protect our user freedoms rather, rather than locking it up. So, so there is that, that line there. You have to try and use, well, I think especially as Bradley was saying, all the tools we can to try and help and, and push forward our user freedoms rather than saying just because we don't particularly like some uses of this law doesn't mean that we can't find a way to use it to our advantage and, and basically turn it around, turn it on its head and like we've done with the GPL and like we've done with free software to really drive things forward and, and upset industry in, in that way that, that, th that this protectionist system that was put in place was never designed to do. Um, I think there's a lot of folks going on in the free software world anyway, and it's rather uncommon that the name is taken over regardless of <coughs> trademark law. So I don't really think the name would be taken over with all the folks if we didn't have the trademark on Debian. Yeah, um, so in terms of forks, but when you have a when you have a project that wants to recognise that it's basically Debian, we should make it fairly easy for them to them to be able to do so. Um, so a 
slightly tweaked version or a Debian blend or something like that, we, we should be able to allow the Debian mark to be used to describe where it has come from. And if it's 99.9% .9 Debian, then we'd say a new kernel or a backported package here, there, and everywhere. Then, I mean, if you, you sort of basically hold it up to the light and go, yes, that, that looks exactly like Debian to me. It's not that much of a, a, a problem, I don't think, for us to be able to say, for people to just use the word Debian to describe what it actually is, because it's Debian. Of course, forks, if they completely change everything, then that's different, but that's why we can review this, and, and one of the reasons we, we wanted to do this licensing, this, this permission-based thing, so if something does go horribly wrong and it does completely change, we can just not renew the permission. A lot of these derived distributions write it on the website quite clearly already, so... I think the only downside has been the, the amount of people running Mint or Ubuntu coming to the hash Debian IRC channel and going, oh, th this PPA doesn't work. <laughs> I have to talk to them about that. But Cool. Um, any more questions? As a handy hint, it's now dinner time. Oh. <laughs> Fidel! <laughs> So since I've already been asked the question once this year, I figure it's only fair to ask you. Okay. Yes, it's a little early to be thinking about this, perhaps, oh. but are you going to run for re-election? <laughs> when I decided to stand, um, I saw a taken view. It's like, do I think I can do a good job for the project and I can provide value for the project? And I think the answer was yes, and apparently quite a few people agreed, and then I found myself waking up with this slightly terrifying job. It, kind of interestingly, a, a lot of the DPL job is talking to other organizations like Free Software Foundation, SFLC, SF, SFC, the GNOME Advisory Board, you, you're on that, you're on this, you, you'd get contact from lots of people. Um, and I said in a couple of the interviews I did, um, is that, again, in a, in a year's, well, in six or so months' um, time, I'm going to have a look again say, do I still think I can do a really good job for the project? And is there anyone else who I think is going to do a better job for the project? If there is, then they can do it. <laughs> if I do think I can do that, then I'll stand again. I, if there's things I think I can, I can help... Um, provide and help push for, then, then yes, but I certainly don't have any, yes, I'm going to do this for this year and this for this year. I, I'm just happy to try and see if I can be, this is, a, this is the latest way I think I can, I can help Debian and help the project, um, as I haven't actually packaged anything in about four years or something like that. Oh, no, no, I packaged something yesterday, today, yesterday and it got rejected from you twice. <laughs> And it was only like a simple backport as well. I got the version numbers wrong and then the suite wrong, so, so I don't do that anymore. <laughs> it's a bad idea. Anyone else? Ooh, everyone's getting hungry. <laughs> right, well, thanks very much, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Um, hopefully it's been mildly amusing or something at least. So um, go get some food. Thanks very much.